like to introduce uh, an Israeli nerd who is always on the cutting edge of technology. His name is Nimrod Kramer. His real name is Nimrod. And, it's uh, uh, Kamer. Is it Kramer or Kamer? Kamer. Uh, uh, Nimrod, this is Mark. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Uh, Nimrod is a nerd. Yeah, I have a few passports. Actually. Kamer. Uh, uh, Nimrod, this is Mark. <laughs> what state are they in? What's your name? What's your name? Florida? Clearwater? Yes, your name. Yes. He doesn't know his name. Look at her. There is something fun about getting that fucked up, but what a waste of resources. Do it in your fucking living room. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce uh, an Israeli nerd who is always on the cutting edge of technology. His name is Nimrod Kramer. His real name is Nimrod. And, it's uh, uh, Kamer. Is it Kramer or Kamer? Kamer. Uh, uh, Nimrod, this is Mark. Hi. Good to see you. Uh, Nimrod is a nerd. Yeah, I have a few passports, actually, Romanian and Israeli. Oh, what's worse than Romania? But because I have the Romanian passport, I can be employed in the UK, unless they leave the EU, and then they're going to kick me out of England. I see. That's the thing. You've been kicked out of a lot of places yeah. over the years. Um, I met you, you were working at Vice. You were uh, let go from there for telling that, that a lot of them... My Vice boss 10,000 fake Twitter followers because he asked me to. Andy Capper, you bought him 10,000 yeah. fake bought Twitter Capper, and he told me He told me to buy it for him, and he said he's going to pay for them, and then he denied everything, and he said, remove the fake followers, and you can't remove them once you pay a click. Oh, really? Yeah, it's called a click farm. A click farm. People in Bangladesh, <laughs> you pay them, it's really cheap. I prefer to pay them than pay Twitter for promoted tweets. Sure. How much is a Twitter follower? So a thousand Twitter followers would be 10 bucks. <laughs> and they're inactive. It's funny because that's not, Twitter's a game. Yeah. It's like Monopoly. And to cheat, like to have someone buy you Park Place, you go, well, you're just ruining the game for yourself. Yeah, people believe the numbers. And if you have so like a big amount of, if, if you pay extra, they're active followers. So they reply to everything oh, you do. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's pathetic. Uh, so you could sell your following? Can you sell your followers? Drop a following. So yeah, you can drop followers on anyone if they even don't want them, like for their birthday, and you can deny that you've done it. But I, I've done. I'm doing it for my friends all the time. Like. Why aren't you trying to speak English better? I should. Yeah. It's 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 sort of a, a lack of assimilation with immigrants these days. I think he speaks yeah. English fine. Do I? I mean, he has an accent, an accent, but so I, do I. Yeah. If I go over there, you know how I sound? <laughs> the reason I came this time to New York is to buy... This time. This the, time. The. This time. The. Is to buy companies. Why can't you any... Not just Israelis. Why can't Israelis. you guys go T-H? The. Yeah. No, not the. Yeah. The rain. No V. There's no V. It's the sound you make with your teeth, air going through your teeth. Which teeth? See, which teeth? Yeah. You haven't even tried. I want to eat, like, if I moved to Israel, I'd be like, what is the sh the shmukum with the tukis and the mishugana? I'd want to learn all the words. You need, okay. Anyway, I came to... Air comes out the front row of teeth. I came to New York to Duh. buy campaign merchandise of Bernie and Trump and sell it to my friends in England. Oh, okay. What do you got? So I got the Trump hat. You got this, like, when you go to Trump Tower, you get this golden bag. And the, 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 hat, the hat is 30 bucks, and in order to buy the hat, you need to tell them that you're a U.S. citizen, and I'm not. So you lied. I actually said, I'm not, and then she said, are you sure you're not? And then I said, okay, I could be. I might be applying for citizenship. And then she allowed me to buy the hat, and those 30 bucks are going to the campaign. And I'm not supposed to be allowed to buy this merchandise. Oh, you're funding a, a foreign campaign. Yeah. That's what... Uh, uh, James O'Keefe was just talking about here. That's what John Oliver has been talking about. Yes. So basically, you're admitting to a crime right in front of me. I'm not, and you just negated our future president's chances. You yeah. just ruined Trump's campaign. Because if they found out, hat. and I might have bought many, many things in that shop, which they moved to the basement, by the way, in Trump Towers for security reasons. It's very like... What's security? Is that what little security. babies get? Is that yeah, nice they, that prevents you from stealing your baba? But anyway, and I bought some <laughs> Bernie merchandise, and Bernie doesn't even Bernie. ask you... Bernie, if you're a citizen, you just go on PayPal. Oh, he's even worse. Yeah, I gave loads of money to Bernie, from the UK even, and the, all the merchandise arrived in my hotel. In so your, your UK PayPal, you can buy anything you want in the States? Yeah, I just PayPal, then like 
It says it doesn't even say on the website. So what did you get of Bernie gear? I got like a thousand t-shirts of Bernie and, uh, <laughs> and pins. And I'm selling them for double the price in the UK. If you are mad at the Jews for controlling the media or always getting involved in money, I'm sorry, they're tenacious. Due diligence. You, <laughs> you go buy a thousand t-shirts and sell them in England. No one's stopping you. They're good at money. And... They say, oh, the Jews, look at medicine dominated by Jews. You go get a fucking medical degree. It's hard. Trump is going today to APAC to, like... Who's Trump? Trump. <laughs> President Trump. Er, er. Er is the tongue it makes a f shape like this. But he kept saying... Er. Trump said Jews are good negotiators. Trump. I'm not a good negotiator. And I'm, like, I grew up in Israel. And he, he went to the Republican Jewish Committee and he's like, you're so good in, like, making deals. And he's going to say the same to APAC, probably. But I don't feel like I'm any good in that. Well, it's this is another problem that liberals seem to have. We're not talking about absolutes. Mm -hmm. Irish people get ornery on whiskey, especially uh -huh. the real Irish. Mm -hmm. Now, you may have some granny who's a teetotaler. That doesn't mean my pattern isn't true. How, how many of them are, like the percentage? Would you oh, that's say? a good question. Finally, someone gets down to the math. Yeah. I would say when we get into 80 and up, you could notice a pattern. Mm -hmm. I mean, 60 is relevant. With, with, this, with uh, Muslims, mm -hmm. we got one in 25 in America young males think that suicide bombing is sometimes are often justified. Mm -hmm. When we get over to Muslim countries like Pakistan, the numbers get up into the 80s. Mm -hmm. I still care about the 25% here, so I guess it depends on the thing. But as far as, like, behavior goes, yeah, like with nature and nurture, 80% of your brain... Nurture? Nurture. What's nurture? Yeah, nice. uh, he's getting... <laughs> nurture. No, well, you can't even discuss this subject because you're our handicap. Yeah. <laughs> Get your tongue you like this. Yeah. It's like a long letter U. There you go. Yeah. Nature R right? or nurture. Yeah. Nurture. Yeah. Nature, nurture. Yeah. Now, with nature, it's what you were born with. And as far as brain goes, it's 80% your parents. Is and it? your race and your fucking ethnicity, whatever, mm -hmm. Northern European versus Sicilian, it's no offense, Mark. Uh, that's what you are. Yeah. 20% is your environment. And if your dad fucked you, well, you're fucked no matter who you are. If Albert Einstein got fucked by his dad, we yeah. wouldn't have a nuclear bomb. Would we? Not. Interesting. I want to talk about this other stunt I want to do. Okay. Um, everybody's looking for Bin Laden's body. Treasure hunters, which I met, are actually they want to find a body which was dumped in the ocean and sell it. Okay. On eBay. I'll buy it. Yeah. So I want to go to Pakistan and pretend to have found the body and create a media storm with like a, a Navy SEAL bag drift upon the shore and like a big press conference on the beach. I love it. Yeah, you can Here's the problem, that. though. Yeah, when we see you people... Like that kid who was in North Korea and is crying his eyes out because he's got 15 years of hard labor for stealing a flag. Yeah. The first thing we all say is, what were you doing there? Yeah. You know, you're a raging Jew bag. Yeah. You're, you're going to Pakistan? That's already insane. LJB, raging Jew bag. Yeah. But I could be like behind the scenes and just employ people to pretend. Oh, that's different. Fixers. Yeah. Yeah, if you can get towel heads to do it, it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, so I need some funding and um, you can be maybe the body in the bag. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm never going to Pakistan, really, or Russia. I'm never going back to China. Mm. Uh, I'm never going to any Muslim country ever, ever. Even Indonesia and Malaysia. Fuck that. Indonesia, mm. there's no booze. There's no. You can't get drunk in Malaysia. Yeah. You can bring one bottle of booze with you on the plane. I'm probably not going to any of those places either. Fuck those places. Fuck <laughs> them. What if it's a connecting flight in the airport? Nothing. In I, Dubai. Ever. I'm not clicking. Well, I will, yeah, if it's a up connecting orbits. flight, you got to you got to sit there for a minute, but yeah. I'm not I'm not leaving the airport. What am I what, what do that flight in, is connecting there? Where am I going? Australia? Australia via Dubai. Everybody switches in Dubai. Probably not going to Australia either. Really? Fuck Australia. It's just hot Canada. I'll go to Canada in July. Yeah. Canada has some Muslim parts, no? Or not? No, not really. I mean, yeah, it's kinda. got Muslim areas of Toronto, I guess, but it's not got, like, Dearborn, Michigan. Yeah. You know what's funny about those hats? I have that hat, and I don't like it. It's got a funny... It gets wider at the top than the bottom, yeah. but you seem to be pulling it off. It's a pro-nerd hat. Yeah, it costs, like, five bucks to make, and... Uh the heavy legal people make it, and some legal immigrants make it. Oh, really? So does it say, I think, I'll bet you 100 bucks if you look in that ad, it says made in America right now. It does, but in, in an American factory. Someone made a piece about the, the hat factory. 
and he, they sold the, like some illegals and legals doing it. Hat factory. 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 But in a, I mean, why not? I mean, you know, that's the whole uh, foreign <laughs> labor thing is a great example of how people are not entrepreneurs anymore and they don't get how hard it is to make fucking anything. I made these toys mm -hmm. years ago and I said, I want them made in America. And they go, okay, they'll be 80 bucks each. Yeah. Or you can pursue the same avenue everyone else is and they'll be two bucks each. Mm -hmm. uh, you can forge your way. And I, someone called in and mentioned that and they go, you just make, there'd be higher quality. People would be willing to pay. No, you're talking about two to four bucks. This would have been 80 bucks. It's not doable. Now, what Trump wants to do is get to a world where it's more doable. Yeah. That doesn't mean overnight we can just start fucking manufacturing everything in America. Maybe cancel again. the label. The labels are so boring, like made in. It should be maybe designed in. Yeah. I don't care where it was made. There's maybe. a chink who wants to bring make Made in China cool, and he doesn't put Made in China. He calls it a designed. Made by Chinese. Mm. That's the tag he pushes. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, I, I'm sorry it's so short here with you, Nimrod. I'm not going to ask you to leave, but it, we are coming to a close here. Uh, what do you want to push? What are you working on? Where do you work? Uh, I'm invoicing all the time to many. Russia Today News, they hire me sometimes. Oh, okay. I followed the campaign. I went to the uh, debate for RT. Cool. So you're freelance. Yeah. Me too. Mm. So the first check pays off the debts. Yeah. The second check, uh... Adds, adds a nest egg for next time. Mm. And then the third check, you go out for a nice dinner. I discovered if you invoice twice, once by fax, once by email, once by, oh, three times, you you might get, get paid triple the times. By oh, that. that's brilliant. Well, that's all the handy. time. So you're a thief. He just gave it up. He admitted to two crimes. Two crimes, one show. <laughs> He's in here. <laughs> uh, let's talk to Lauren Southern. Lauren, are you there? Hey, Gavin. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Do you have a boyfriend? Do I have a boyfriend? Milo. No. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 20. 20. Wow, you're young. I know. Everyone thinks I'm 30. <laughs> It's the makeup. You dominate the internet. I compete with you at Rebel Media, and I just can't knock you out of the top three spots there. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you have more videos above my videos, but I do have the top three spots. So. You have the top three spots, yeah. And I think it's because young girls control the economy. So even when you go, young girls are being fucking idiots, that's still in the young girls category. So, pachoom. Oh, yeah. Replace me with, like, a young, nerdy white guy with, like, acne. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I wouldn't get any views. It's, sex it's reverse sexism. It is. And I see that everywhere I work, too, even with right-wing media. If there's one smart, pretty girl, I'll just watch her rocket past me. And well, it's get life on easy mode. It's, it's like, it's what? It's like when you go to, it's when you go to click video game settings, it's life on easy mode. Uh, I'm not familiar with video games, but yeah, no. like I see, I can, I can guess what you mean. It's easier to click the easy settings. Yeah. Yeah. It's life on easy settings. I see. <laughs> um, so the last time we checked in with you, you went to a, uh, what, what the fuck was that meeting about? Oh, God, wait. BC, where, where you got the piss accord I, on you. Oh, the, the piss, yeah, that was an anti-fascist meeting. Uh, so a bunch of anti-fascists trying to shut down the free speech of a libertarian. Oh, yeah, that was it. You had a libertarian coming over the border to talk, talk about smaller government. The government prevented him from coming in. And somehow, and this is what I don't get about the left, that involves trans people. What the yeah. fuck has that got to do with gender? Well, I, because some of the girls there recognized me, we inevitably got into a debate on gender. And one of the girls was like, we need to be inclusive for all the genders. And I'm like, oh, so men and women. <laughs> and they just lost it. They poured piss on me. They all laughed at me, told me to go to hell. Um, luckily, I have a bit of a sense of humor. The whole situation was ridiculous. Had it been people I respected that poured piss on me and told me to go to hell, that might have been an upsetting situation. But these were a bunch of mom's basement social justice warriors so it was more hilarious than uh, devastating for me but yeah took a shower told the internet what happened and then all the feminists online told me it was a false flag that Ezra Levant had paid for and we had faked ah. it all because don't hashtag believe women when they're right wing <laughs> right and nothing like this has ever happened before so it must have been no. done by someone else because you have to stage that kind of behavior because it's so impossible to happen in real life Yes, of course. So that person never got caught? Because I've watched the video 850 times, and I can't even tell if it's a man or a woman who poured piss on you. 
You know, it was actually a chick. Like, I'm, it, I've got a different angle of the footage, and it was a girl who did it. And the police did contact me to go and take her to court and everything. But I don't, I'm really annoyed with the kind of Sioux culture we live in. The courts are backed up a, a year to two years, the cop told me. It would literally take two years to get this person actually sentenced for pouring piss on me. I'm not about to go and do that and waste my time. And also, like, all the people that are saying this is some horrific crime that happened to me. I need to get justice. It's like they've never been on a sports team. This was basically like a sports team prank that happened to me. It's really nothing. I'm really annoyed with the culture we live in where people are suing and pressing criminal charges for getting bumped into. If it had been a guy, the only justice I would have needed was one of the guys beside me punching him in the face, and hopefully that would be that. But I'm so annoyed with everyone going to the police for getting a drink spilled on them and just the tiniest things happening. Yeah, we were actually sitting next to a retired cop who was uh, recently complaining about how much time bullshit eats up of your day. Mm -hmm, Exactly. Well, you've got the Gregory Allen Elliott case that just happened here, and I'm like, no wonder the courts are backed up a year, two years. You've got feminists trying to get men put in jail for sending tweets. (laughs) Like, I'm not about to add a piss incident to their um, court case pile. I know what you're saying, and I totally agree with you, and it would be hypocritical as a libertarian to go crying to the police for everything. And yes, we live in a litigious culture, and yes, that guy who got charged for a hate crime, almost went to jail for disagreeing with someone on Twitter, is infuriating, and you don't want to mimic that. However, if they're playing that game, sometimes I just think, shouldn't we be fighting fire with fire? And if they want to throw us in jail, let's throw them in jail and play dirty pool just like them. I mean, sure, there are people that are doing that and are pursuing that. And if this happens to me again, maybe I will. But it's, I I hate playing the same dirty game they play. I I hate it. It's really tough for me to do as much as. Uh, we, we are going to get to a point where we do that. But I don't want it to be a fire where, where eventually I'm taking them to the police as well for sending me mean tweets when they're when it's just so ridiculous. You kind of just have to um, take the high road on that. And I do, I'm happy I did that because now uh, when people, like for example, I'm talking about Michelle Fields incident right now a little bit and people are like, oh, Lauren, what if that happened to you? Wouldn't you go and press charges? And I'm like, well, <laughs> like now I can have this incident that I can point to and right. say, I didn't freak out over that. I didn't go and act the victim in this situation. Right. You don't have to. Being a victim is a choice. And that you're talking I about Michelle that. Fields, who claims that uh, Trump's campaign manager manhandled her when she approached Trump. But we've all since seen the video, and it looks like he's delicately moving an old lady out of the way. I heard on the weekend, Charles C. Johnson said in her police report it includes biting. The the what? implication is there that he bit her, too. He used teeth. I'll have well, to... I have- yeah, I uploaded a photo or a video or to my Twitter, and it's literally Justin Trudeau grabbing my shoulder and moving me out of the way when I'm trying to ask him a question. So the exact same thing happens to every reporter ever. They all get moved out of the way when they're ne- near famous figures. And that was just a very shocking exaggeration for me. I, I saw it. In fact, I was inclined to believe it at first because a lot of people I respected, I saw talking about it on Fox, talking about it in Breitbart, saying nearly dragged to the ground. And I was like, oh, that sucks. And then this video comes out and I'm like are you, are you serious this is what the outrage is over and I'm not sure if you saw Lewandowski uh, just got in trouble again for apparently pulling someone's collar and they're like oh he just yanked the guy back in the crowd and he's literally just tugging on the guy's collar a bit so I'm not sure if Lewandowski's like the Hulk where he touches someone and all the ribs <laughs> break or something yeah but... that that chicken x-men who touches you and you die yeah That's exactly it. Uh, wait, Nimrod has a question. So Milo Yiannopoulos, who's a good friend of mine, could he actually become Trump's press secretary? There's a hashtag, Milo for press sec. <laughs> yeah, it's conceivable. I don't think you have to be American to do that. It's a freelance job. Mm-hmm. And would Trump actually, does he know him yet? Does Trump knows Milo? I think Trump knows of Milo. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I'd endorse him being press secretary. That would be excellent. It would be great. Um, you know, Justin Trudeau says... Uh, if you, when you kill your enemies, they win. And his mentality is, I don't want to stoop to their level, their terrorist level. I want right. to stoop to their level. And-